Um, now going in more depth into the pol political realm. Uh, so there is the um, kind of the service to self uh, way of governance. And so we have kind of celestial alignments. Um, so fear, anger, and control, uh, the mission is to control, dominate, infringing on free will, methods, manipulation, influence to create fear and division and control. Historical leaders include Genghis Khan, Joseph Stalin, and Mao Zedong. And the most aligned current leaders uh, would be like Netanyahu of Israel or NATO US. Uh, now, I, I have to add in the caveat that this is, the, uh, the, for the current leaders, this is not a final say. Uh, this is just a kind of a speculation um, in terms of that that seems to be where their rhetoric is at at the time that I made uh, this presentation. They, because they're alive, they're able to change uh, what they're going to do in the future. So relevant quote, the so-called Orion Empire is a kind of confederation of those who are negatively polarized and who are responding to the call of those who wish to graduate in the negative polarity. Uh, then you have the uh, space pirates who are the neutral. Uh, so they're not nor the four to 50% service to self and six to 50 uh, service to others. Now, these are very, very common. Uh, the focus is still war, suffering, chaos, and the mission is to disrupt and create chaos, preventing positive harvests. And the methods are sowing fear and maintaining low vibrational states. Aligned leaders uh, historically include Adolf Hitler, Winston Churchill, Richard Nixon. Basically, leaders that from their rhetoric, you can tell that they're promoting a lot of fear. Um, and most aligned current leaders would be like Zelensky and Kaya Kalas and Dmitry Medvedev. Um, just because they're promoting fear. And like I said, for the current leaders, they can change. We don't know. Uh, maybe they'll start promoting love. It, it's hard to say for sure. Uh, Andrew, do, you want, do you want thoughts on this or do you want to? Yeah, do you... go ahead. Well, you, if you want to jump in, yeah, uh, you, you can give some thoughts. I do you know, have I think, a few I more. Think, I, think, mm -hmm. I, I think you're you're making a very a very interesting point here about politics. And I think that it's it's very it's very much at the forefront of my thinking and i the conclusion i've come to is that the political system is dictated by the resource availability and that whether it's joseph stalin or adolf hitler i think that i think your categorization we might want to question that because i think all of these people set out with good intentions and i think it is the external circumstances and the reality of human behavior and the tragedy of the commons, which forces people in leadership positions to reimagine the tools at their disposal as far as human organization goes. So when we categorize people the way you are, I don't know how accurate that is. I think there is a progression of leadership, and I think a lot of it has to do with the scope of the problem, the external circumstances, the, the resource availability, and their ability to organize people in in out of love and empathy um you know I, stalin worked like a monk and stalin i think was originally you know no one worked harder than stalin and if you look at hitler from his his origins i think he was well intentioned and when you look at netanyahu he's coming from a place of tragedy and fear of the holocaust so i don't think that these clear-cut divisions are necessarily applicable or helpful I, I hear what you're saying. Um, so the, these divisions are kind of uh, given to us by the Confederation of Planets, which I haven't gotten to yet. Um, but in, in terms of uh, like some of them, like Mao Zedong, uh, he has a very clear, uh, he believed in following the reverse golden rule. Uh, do unto others what you don't want done to yourself. And so, uh, you know, he you know, did torture and famine and all of these things. And that was, he was just very, very diligently aligned to that. And what, what we do have free will, like you, you were talking about that there's definitely a deterministic uh, environmental element. However, the person also has free will to choose whether they want to uh, align service to self or service to others or stay somewhere in between. Um, and so the Mao and Stalin, they were very diligent and they worked very well on achieving uh, all the power for themselves. And so th that is admirable. Um, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. Um, and it, like from the interviews of Netanyahu, it seems like he's also on that track. Uh, like I said, it's speculative and you're free to have your own opinion on that. And like, I'm, 
I'm just going based on externalities, right? And like Dmitry Medvedev often very promoting fear. Same thing with Kaya Kalas and Zelensky. Um, and so the, the, the space pirates uh, have in mind is simply a uh, continuing harvest of food and that food being fear uh, also is mentioned like anger, suffering, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, so, so these are higher density entities who are kind of working behind the scenes and motivating uh, such individuals to promote more fear so that they can feed on uh, the fear that is generated from a uh, war. And then you have the Confederation of Planets, the service to others, uh, so which are ser still have an element of service to self, 49 to 0 percent, uh, but otherwise 51 percent to 100 percent service to others, where the focus is on forgiveness, love and acceptance. The mission is to promote love, unity and service to others, emphasis on free will, spiritual evolution of all beings, aligned leaders, historically Jesus, Abraham Lincoln, Mahatma Gandhi, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Nelson Mandela. Uh, most aligned current leaders uh, like Xi Jinping, uh, Viktor Orban from Hungary, and uh, relevant quotes, we are the Confederation of Planets and have come to tell you a very simple story. It is a story of the power of absolute and unconditional love. And but, you uh, that, but again, Andre, using the examples that you just cited, I mean, the minute mm -hmm. Gandhi freed himself from England, all of a sudden you had the division between Pakistan and India, and then you had the division between Pakistan and Bangladesh. And I think you have to be realistic about the human condition and about organizing people. And it doesn't matter. It's not about leaders and heroes. It's about people coming together and working. And we are tribal in nature and we react to whatever the resource availability is. And we and civilization is extracted by nature. And until we can create a civilization which is not extracted, but but has a net resource positive outcome, and is in service to nature and future generations, and acknowledges our our relationship between the past and the future, it doesn't matter what the the initial intention of leaders are. You're going to be dealing with the reality of humankind and power struggles. So. I agree that there is certainly an environmental aspect to it. And uh, certainly Gandhi was not the motivating factor behind the division of India into Pakistan and Bangladesh. Um, he, he, he actually protested against it and he protested it against the violence that was occurring. Uh, that was, those demarcations were made, uh, I mean, they were partially because of historical uh, of the Muharaj or, uh, well, well the, 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 the Muslim caliphate that had ruled over uh, parts of India, those parts of India, as well as uh, the British and how the British decided to carve up the territory. But that's exactly the point. You can't take these people in isolation. You've got to take them within the total trajectory with that, that, that humankind is in this dance of power that has dictated humankind from the time we, we climbed out of the trees. And if we're going to move forward in a positive way, it's, it's, it's not a question of looking at these people and demonizing some and, and, and sanctifying others. Everybody's doing the best they can do. I I think that the the point here is to um, that we want to promote the uh, more service to other leaning behaviors such as forgiveness, love, and acceptance, and promoting unity and service to others. And so, if we have leaders with those uh, expressions, if they're promoting forgiveness, love, and kindness, then we know there's a higher chance that they are service to others leaders. And we can look at these historical leaders and as examples of what good leadership looks like. Um, and so that way people can elect the, uh, no, the I, I understand that's what you're saying. And I'm just suggesting that I think we need to question that premise because I think historically it doesn't hold true. I think it is. It's about power struggles and it's about longevity. And I think there needs to be other motivations. And, you know, they gave Jesus nails in his hands and they killed Gandhi and they killed Martin Luther King and they killed JFK and things go on. And the question is, is I agree with you. Ideally, it would be wonderful to live in the world that you're describing. I just don't think that's the world we live in. Uh, not sure what you mean by that. Um... The, the point was that they, they created a good influence while they were there. Um, 